Everyone has one. Some sit on a coffee table, on the floor, or a shelf. Inside its pages, a world unlike any other. Colors and characters brought to life. Lines and shadows strategically placed. It seems like magic, and its creators, like magicians, wave their wands, cast their spells, and transport us to places we've never been before. But where does it start? Where is that enchanted place where ideas are born? And how do you reach that land of inspiration? I don't know. It's the hits of the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and today. <laughs> I don't have a lot of ideas. <laughs> don't let them fool you. These and other experts do have a lot of helpful information to share about coming up with ideas, fighting through challenges, and the journey through the creative process. They're giving you the keys to a kingdom of pure imagination. It's all in your head and it's a struggle to get what's in your head and in your heart out on paper. And it's a very difficult thing to do. Especially if you're under the pressures of a deadline. Are you going to give him a brown shirt? Brown shirt? No, I just can't. Oh. Oh, okay. At the first annual Kids Love Comics Day, Sarah and Emma were trying to beat the clock. The contest is at 3 o'clock today and we just found out about it like two days ago. We need four comic book um, panels. So we're writing the description and we're gonna put these files in. Kids from all over came to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania to meet their favorite artists and learn about making comics. So in Detective comics are beginning to be recognized as more than child's play. Comic books um, are an entry into a whole world of literature. And in fact, you can even tell any type of story in comic book format. You could tell Moby Dick as a comic book if you wanted to. Maybe it's the bright colors. Maybe it's the humor. Or maybe the action-packed adventures of super-powered superheroes like Batman, Spider-Man, and any other kind of super, uh, man. But whatever the reason, the world of comics lends itself well to our look inside any creative process. Um, where's that file? Oh, here it is. Emma and Sarah are struggling, but young Gabe seems to be overflowing with ideas. It has a lot of features, lots of action. There are robots, an army, giant, giant things um, that he crawls into. Drones are um, things that, things like, um, Robots, they're sort of like droids, only a whole lot less pathetic. So then I make him like a reptile with tentacles. Um, I just thought like, hey, I should get, get someone who could conquer Superman. Like, I got, like, for Pete's sake, like Superman's gotta stop being the strongest. He always is the strongest. So I'm gonna invent someone who could kick his butt. It's a funny thing, isn't it? How can ideas come so easy to some and so hard for others? And where's the best place to find ideas and inspiration? Well, let's ask the experts. Oh, I love, I, I love funny cartoons. That's my favorite thing. They're different for everybody. I liked Mad Magazine. I liked the newspaper comics, like Snoopy and uh, For Better, For Worse. But no creator would be where they are without them. Influence. Thank you. Thank you, so Thank you very much. A constant cartoon watcher. So I loved the Flintstones and the Jetsons and um, McGilla Gorilla, and I mean, I just loved cartoons. And in the world of comics and cartooning, there may be no bigger influence than Charles Schultz. Uh, Peanuts was a major influence on me. That world was so real to me, it's even hard for me to describe how real that was. And here this cartoonist who was doing four panels a day somehow was able to 
put something in his work that so impacted my life. I'm realizing the, the power of a comic strip to, to impact someone for, for good. Uh, and I was very grateful to Schultz and that kind of renewed my interest in how do I take the best of what I've pulled out of life to put into my own work. Some of my very earliest memories are Charles Schultz uh, comic strips. I remember one in particular. It's, it's snowing outside and it's very cold and it's Charlie Brown and Linus and they say, Snoopy looks very cold, we should go and comfort him. And they walk over and they say, be of good cheer, Snoopy. Yes, be of good cheer. And then they walk away. And I remember being like three years old and thinking, I don't know what that means, but I'm pretty sure that's the secret to life. If I could just understand what he's saying there. But the thing about influences is that they can only take you so far. And even a veteran artist, like Joe Staten, who has drawn and created several timeless characters, had to figure out the secret behind his influences. Well, my main influences coming along were um, guys like Steve, Steve Ditko and Jack Cole and Chester Gould, and very you know comic booky guys. And they, they all had a, a very distinctive way of telling a story, and comics, whatever it is, is telling stories. Uh, how you set your characters up, what kind of world they live in. And these, these were guys who created a world that people could live in. So I tried to understand how they did it and how they did it was surprisingly simple. When you start out an influence is someone, I want to be like that. I want to draw like Charles Schultz, or I want to draw like Dave Sim, or Jack Kirby, or Will Eisner. And then what you realize, well, if you really want to be like your heroes, you don't want to draw like, or write like them. You want to draw and write like you, because that's what they were doing. They were exploring themselves, they were exploring the medium, they were creating something new. And suddenly you realize, oh, the best way to be like my idols, like the people who have influenced me, is to do my own thing. Okay, but in order to do your own thing, you still need to find ideas, right? So, aren't we right back to where we started? Well, it might seem that way, but not really. Actually, the next stop on our yellow brick road to creativity is inspiration. Inspiration is really where ideas come from. And finding inspiration is as simple as opening your eyes and looking around. Uh, I, I got into comic books as a high school intern. Kyle Baker is another veteran of the comic industry. When I started in comic books, there was only one kind of comic book. They only made superhero comic books in the early 80s. There was only two companies, Marvel Comics and DC Comics, and they only made Superman and Spider-Man. But over the years, the world of comics has grown, and so has Kyle's family. So it was very easy for him to make his next move. I started doing cartoons about my family because they take up most of my time and attention. So I couldn't really concentrate on other things. I wasn't thinking of any new superheroes. So the cartoon, The Bakers, I do it about my family. My, my kids do lots of funny things, and I do funny things with my kids. Um, you can get inspiration for anything no matter where you go. 11-year-old Drew doesn't have as much experience as Kyle Baker, but her ideas come from the same place, her life and the people she knows. I just started working on a story that's all about like just the people I know called The Devil and the Damsel. It's about me. I, I'm like the, um, I'm this girl in, her, in this school and like she thinks she's just not used to being in a public school and in a middle school. And, um, and everyone thinks like she's like just this like shy girl and like she's not cool or anything like that. But then she also has this alter ego as like this, um, this cool like superhero. And like she saves the day like and nobody knows it. Sounds like a cool story. And she's got more where that came from. Yeah, this is Cherry Pie. Then there's Major Flirt, The Band, The KLAWS, Trouble in Oz, Static, I don't know how her brain works because it just goes nonstop and it's amazing to me. I first started drawing like um because I saw my dad drawing when I was really, really little and I just thought that it was cool like the things he drew. So I just started drawing <laughs> and ever since then I've just been drawing and drawing. In fact, Drew's sort of the go-to artist in her school. She's created posters for events and helped her classmates with advice. But even though Drew excels at drawing, there's still one thing she needs to work on. I have so many projects and none of them are finished. A common problem for many artists, and something the experts tell us is a very important crossroad in the creative process. 
My name's Harold Buckholtz, and I do a comic book called Acredale. It's also known as Apathy Cat. It's funny, the creative process is, is one of those things that before you do it, if for most artists, from what I understand, it's true for me. I really, really want to say something. I'm excited about the, the abstract idea. So I'll, I'll start with a character and I'll start with a situation between characters. And often I'll just be writing dialogue between them that's kind of fun and free. And, and it, it's, it's all over the page. It's not in any particular order. It doesn't have panels necessarily. I'm just trying to think through the ideas as quickly as I can. Some prefer not to think at all. What I start out with is just driving or just sitting staring at the wall or in the shower or kind of mowing the lawn, just thinking about the characters and letting the characters sort of bounce around in my head. Jimmy Gownley is the creator of the successful kids comic Amelia Rules. He started drawing comics when he was a teenager. Yeah, the number one most important thing to me as a creator is communication. I'm thinking about an audience or an imaginary audience. I always uh, think, I'm thinking of the saddest uh, little girl in the world and no one's telling her the truth, no one's talking to her, no one's trying to make her laugh and if I had one shot to talk to her, what would I say? And that's what Amelia is. I'm thinking of that person. She may not exist in the real world, but she's my ideal reader. So, you've thought about your audience, but the challenge remains to get something on paper. No matter how long you've been at it, it can scare the best of them. The hardest thing is looking at a blank piece of paper and just, you know, thinking, well, golly, there is absolutely no way I can fill that piece of paper up. And uh, just, just coming up with some way to get everything down on paper. And once you're into it, it comes, you know, there's no stopping it. But just getting on that paper in the first, first shot is the hardest thing. I just start drawing and I draw in any order. I, I might start on page 12 or page four, and uh, that drives people around me crazy because eventually it ends up being an organizational nightmare at the end. But it's fun for me to do. I try to do whatever I'm inspired to do at that moment. Once I get into it, there's a level of discipline that I have to put into it. One of the funny things is that I had to put a little sign on my, my desk while I was, was doing the, the, the drawing of, uh, of Apathy Cat to say, I love to do this, because <laughs> I needed to remind myself, because at some points it was quite difficult. So it, it, in my case as a creator, doing this feels so right, but it is a challenge. And I don't always feel like I'm up to the challenge, but I know it's what I'm supposed to be doing. So that's what carries me through the, the tough times. Of course, there's no rule in creating comics that says you have to work alone. Jane Fisher is the writer and creative force behind the youth comic WJHC. Well, I get the idea in my head and I write out the idea. And then sometimes I actually even block it out page by page so that I know exactly what's going on each page until I decide if I want the story to be 14 pages or 20 pages or 24 pages. Once that's done though, Jane's vision goes through several different sets of eyes and hands. As you know, some uh, comic book creators do the whole thing themselves. They write, they draw, they do everything. But Jane doesn't create her art, so she works with a handful of other people throughout the process. Everyone from artists to editors. I'm dependent on quite a number of other people, and I'm so lucky because the people who work with me are fantastic and they're really committed to the project. Steve Peters is another creator who has taken the idea of collaborating on comics even further with his character Sparky. He, he, he was a doodle. Um, he just popped, I, I was actually flying out to the San Diego Comic Con and I was on the plane and I just started doodling and he just appeared somehow. Sparky's adventures though don't just appear out of nowhere. The Sparky comic is made up of different stories and each story is done by a different person or it's a jam comic that's passed around to different artists at a convention like this one. It's just organic, it's just whatever the artists are involved uh, come up with. And just like Sparky, all of the comic creators we spoke with have their own unique way of doing things. It may be hard to pinpoint exactly what you need to do and what works best for you, but no matter how you go about it, it's not always fun. To go through the process, know that there will be steps of hard work. Know that there will be times when you want to quit. Know that there will be times when things are going to be tough. 
and you're going to be doing stuff that you didn't want to do. You are doing spinach work. That's one of the things about comics. When you read it, it's, it's a very quick read and it looks effortless. But that facade of effortlessness is masking the fact that it was a lot of hard work behind it. So yeah, don't be discouraged if it takes you a long time. Don't be discouraged if um, it doesn't look on paper the way it looked in your mind. Uh, that's just part of the process. And it's true for professionals just as it's true for amateurs. Um, I don't get 100% of what's in my mind out onto the paper. Um, and I don't work as fast as I'd like to. But that's the difference between being a professional artist and being an amateur artist. Being willing to sit down, take however long it takes, to do the work, to do the things you don't want to do. If you follow through, and if you take it to the point where you have a finished product, you're ahead of 99% of the people. Because a lot of people don't have that passion. They think they'd like to do something, but they don't take it to that final step. And don't be surprised if it is hard work. Don't be surprised if it is tough to, uh, to spend hours and hours and hours on honing something down to as good as you want, and then it winds up not being as good as you, you wished. That's normal, and that's part of the process. The, de the determining factor is if you're going to be a cartoonist, you will work through those things. You will have such a burning desire to share who you are through comics that you'll be willing to do it because everything you do that's worthwhile is going to have some hard work involved. This may be true, but sometimes the... sometimes an idea... oh... it just won't come. Sometimes I just have to say, this isn't happening today, and I just can't do it. And sometimes it could even be a week that I just don't have an idea and there's nothing I can do. I had a massive writer's block that lasted like six to eight months, and I just could not, could not snap myself out of it. And then eventually you realize that there sort of isn't a thing as writer's block. It's just ultimately a fear or it's ultimately laziness or some combination of the two and you have to snap out of it and realize this is what you're here to do this is your one life any time you waste not doing this is time you're not getting back so the only trick to get out of writer's block is to sit and write it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't matter if it's good if it's bad but it's getting you past the problem and what so that's what I did I just try to keep writing because if I keep writing and I get past it, I can always go back and change things if they need to be changed. So I try moving forward as much as I can. As soon as you're hot and you're excited again, get right back into writing and drawing. Don't let it cool down. Just keep going. And then don't continue going until you're burned out. Stop when it's still going good. And then you'll be able to get into this rhythm again. Um, we have like a, si a sister, that's good. A sister, okay. a sister named sister. Debbie. <laughs> still, there are no guarantees that Sarah, Emma, Gabe, Drew, you or anyone else will be able to turn their dream into dollars. So what separates the dreamers from the doers? The best thing you can possibly do is do finished work. Um, it's, it's fine to doodle. Doodling is great. Doodling can build up lots of talents and skills. But what, what doing finished work requires is an ability to um, go through every single step, including the spinach steps, the steps you don't want to do. If you take it to that level, those are the people who succeed. Never stop writing. You can never write enough. Always have paper and a pen handy. Or if you're an artist, always have paper and markers if you're young or older or colored pencils. And always keep producing because even if you're frustrated, that's the only way that you'll get better is to keep doing it. If you have your own characters, just draw them all the time. Draw characters that are in the comics. Uh, look around you and draw the kids of the class. You know, as long as, as, long as you're drawing, you're... It's really uh, a growth thing, and it's, it's a way of learning your trade. As, as often as you can keep your hand moving, um, that's what you, that's, you're teaching yourself something. Remember to be patient with yourself. It's going to take time. Understand that whatever you do, there's going to be work involved, and that's where the rewards actually come. And I think that's what separates a lot of amateurs from professionals. A lot of amateurs want to have written a book or they think they're going to write a book, and professionals enjoy the act of writing a book, and that's a huge difference.
The creative process is full of twists and turns that can trip you up if you're not careful. But if you have the drive and determination to share your view of the world, perhaps you too can become one of these creative wizards. Just don't be afraid to try. I like to just um, try to draw something and just keep going with it and keep practicing it and like just try to get better at it and then it could lead to something and you could end up being like really good if you want to be. I ended up going into comic books because it was the kind of job that I could do alone. All I needed was a piece of paper and a pencil. Today, if you have a computer, there's so many, you can do anything you want now. You can make your own movies if you want. So I, I would just tell kids to get in there and do it. And just do it and do it and do it. And don't believe the people that say you're great. And also don't believe the people that say you're not. You know, you just have to believe in yourself. You have to do the work and eventually it'll all come out in the end. As long as you have that desire and you have the willingness to find what works for you, if you're willing to do that, you'll find a voice and you'll find something to say that people will be grateful for. It can be a career. You can make a living at this for a long time. So, you know, keep at it and keep at it. That's probably the best advice anyone could ever give. So, open your eyes, free your mind, and start creating.